this thing at first, but damn. Shocker, origin explored. Spider-Man boasts of an array of marvelous villains such as Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Venom, Kingpin, and the likes. With a gallery that amazing, it is easy to forget the minor supervillains such as Hydro Man and the Shocker. We've already covered Hydro Man and his MJ crazy antics before, so in this video we'd like to shed the spotlight on the Shocker. The Shocker is an antagonist and a supervillain under the Marvel comics. He was created by the legends Stan Lee and John Romita Sr. to be an adversary of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. As an inventor and an engineer, he created his own fight suit and weapons. He began his run as a burglar and a safecracker. As Shocker, he rose in the criminal underworld of New York. Once he had made a name for himself, he was employed by crime lords and opposed by Spider-Man. The most notable example of this being his affiliation with Kingpin and Ali Stair Smith in Spider-Man The Animated Series. Shocker made his debut in March 1967 in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 46. From issue 157 to 162, he appeared as a prominent and regular character. He was also an important character in the comic series The Superior Foes of Spider-Man. The man is smart, but too cocky for his own good. He feels inferior and masquerades it with his cockiness. He is amazing with tools, but terrible with escaping incarceration. And he goes against a superhero with gadgets made by himself, and he has no inherent superpower. Today, we will talk about how Shocker came to be, how he created his devices, and his story arcs that make him exciting enough to be Spider-Man's 23rd greatest enemy according to IGN. Before diving into the content, we would like to make a very small request to our viewers. Please subscribe to Marvelous Videos, like and comment on our videos and press the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a video. We would be grateful to you and we hope to bring you the best nerdy content. So without further ado, let's get cracking. No? How about we start with Okay, face punch it is. Shocker, origin in the comics. Shocker makes his first appearance without much of an introduction. Spider-Man intercepts a guy in a fight and is seemingly overpowered thanks to Shocker's Vibroshock gauntlets. He doesn't seem to have any superpowers as such, but his gadgets are efficient enough to take a massive toll on the good old wall crawler. It's evident that the guy has a fake superiority complex. He's absurdly proud of the power of his gauntlets and constantly refers to himself as Spider-Man's superior. Towards the end of the issue, he's obviously bested by the superhero. However, he doesn't go down without letting the readers know where he came from. Originally known as Herman Schultz, Shocker was born in New York City. His parents died early. Herman was extremely intelligent. He could invent gadgets and engineer them brilliantly. However, he dropped out of high school and began to use his talents for illegal activity such as burglary and cracking safes. He was pretty good at what he did, but he wasn't very good at evading imprisonment. He had already been in prison before and was at the risk of losing his freedom once again during his safe cracking endeavors. After he got caught again, his adeptness with tools helped him to get a gardener's job at the prison workshop. But Herman had freedom in his mind. He wanted to get out and to do that, he'd had to invent something so foolproof that he'd never be caught again. He worked on his gauntlets that went on to become his means to freedom and no one suspected anything. Ultimately, after months of work, he used the vibrations from the gauntlets to blast the prison walls. Once again, he was a free man. The only problem here was the backlash from the vibrations was way too strong. To mitigate those effects, he developed a foam-lined fabric suit and heavy, heavy boots. This would absorb all the shocks. Meanwhile, a lifetime battery in his belt would power his gauntlets. And thus, the shocker was born. With these devices, he could crack safes with just the vibrations. However, to activate his powers, he'd need to press his thumbs on the gauntlet buttons. So during his second fight with Spider-Man, Spidey webbed his fingers and was ultimately able to capture the Shocker. A few issues later, Shocker stole an ancient stone tablet. The tablet was inscribed with a formula that restored youth. Silvermane used that tablet, but his youth was restored way beyond what one would consider youth and he actually stopped existing. Shocker gradually upped his game at being a criminal and went past the basic illegal activities such as burglaries. Once, he blacked out almost half of New York City and held it ransom for a million dollars. We've already mentioned how this guy has a superiority complex with an inflated ego. He stayed true to that here and strategically blacked out the grids so that the city would spell out his name when looked at from a bird's eye view. He's quite stupid for someone who can cause a giant blackout single-handedly and create gadgets good enough to outdo Spider-Man in a fight. Because if he's doing it all for money, he could have just made something cool and sold it for millions. That's why they call me the Shocker. So, very painful or sorta painful? Shocker's classic story from Spider-Man, the animated series. 
Spider-Man, the animated series, has featured Shocker as an associate of Ali Star Smith, the inventor who works for Kingpin. Nothing is known about his early life in the show, and his real name isn't mentioned either. He has been featured in several story arcs of the show. Shocker tries to help Kingpin While Rhino stole the Prometheum X, Eddie Brock got photos of it. Kingpin found out about it and obviously wanted to do away with Eddie because he couldn't risk being caught. To help him out, Alistar Smythe offered him to the perfect man, with the perfect device to help him out. Here, Shocker is given the Vibroshock gauntlets and the suit by Smythe, unlike the comics where Herman created the gadgets himself. Shocker goes after Eddie Brock to get those photos of Rhino. Unfortunately for him, Spider-Man was at Eddie's apartment, looking for Rhino's pictures as well. He overheard Shocker threatening Eddie and went after Shocker. The two ended up fighting and once it ended, Shocker believed that he killed the wall crawler. He was wrong though. Spidey tracked him to his hideout and got away after stealing the Prometheum X. The Abduction of John Jameson Kingpin learned about his incident and ordered Ali Star Smythe to get it back, even if he had to hold New York City hostage. So Smythe abducted John Jameson, who was then hospitalized. Shocker snuck into the hospital room where John Jameson was kept and kidnapped him. He then broke into the father's room, aka J. Jonah Jameson, and told him that he had abducted John. To negotiate, he asked Jameson to bring Spider-Man to the church where he'd exchange John for the Prometheum X. Spider-Man almost kills Shocker Spider-Man and JJJ went to the church. Spidey handed out the Prometheum X to Smythe in return for John. However, Smythe got Shocker with him to take care of Spider-Man once and for all. Shocker was overwhelmed by Spidey's strength and lured him to the church's bell tower. He blasted at him with the gauntlets, but Spider-Man broke a stone railing and then used it to break Shocker's gauntlets. Here, Spider-Man was under the influence of the symbiote, so he was a lot more violent than usual. He held Shocker over a ledge, threatening to kill him. He ended up dropping him from above, but finally came to his senses. He then used his webbing and saved Shocker's life who got away. Partnership with Rhino Shocker partners up with Rhino to kill Spider-Man. The two of them went against Spidey, resulting in a brutal battle where Spider-Man seemed to be completely overwhelmed. Shocker even tried to kill him by powering up his gauntlets to the max. However, Venom arrived and trapped Rhino and Shocker in a giant web. Both villains were ultimately arrested. The Insidious Six Kingpin formed a notorious villainous group called the Insidious Six. He planned a prison breakout of Shocker, Doc Ock, Chameleon, Rhino, Mysterio, and Scorpion out of prison to carry out his plans. During the first mission, Shocker messed up royally. Doc Ock had used his mechanical arms to capture Spider-Man, but during this time, the Insidious Six began to argue amongst each other. At the heat of the moment, Shocker blasted at Dr. Octopus's arm, causing Spider-Man to get away. They got hold of him again by kidnapping Aunt May. During this time, Spider-Man had also lost his powers, so he was easily captured when he tried to rescue Aunt May. Shocker tried to kill him once again, but Dr. Octopus stopped him. Later, Peter used his smarts to trick the villains into going atop a roof where Peter allegedly met Spider-Man. Shocker blasted at him with his gauntlets, but Spider-Man regained his powers and escaped. The Insidious Six ultimately disbanded because of their failure. What makes Shocker so deadly? Shocker has no superpowers. He's just a regular guy with some great intellect, but that comes a long way in the superhero world. After all, Tony Stark is just a guy in a suit of armor. Shocker is quite the brilliant inventor. He is also a gifted engineer. Turns out, he is self-taught. Considering he has built his gauntlets and suit from scratch, it wouldn't be a stretch to call him a genius either. He believes himself to be the greatest safecracker in the world. Not sure if that's true, but he does keep getting caught for someone who's the best. His physical strength is similar to that of a regular guy who trains a lot. However, when he is in his element, he is quite dangerous. The equipment he uses, the Vibroshock gauntlets, are strong enough to rumble an entire building and give Spider-Man a run for his money. He has two Vibroshock units, which he activates with the thumb trigger. The gauntlets then blast concentrated air, as it is made to vibrate at an intense frequency. So he's got both long-range and short-range vibrational punches. It can weaken and destroy walls and entire buildings if necessary. He can even control the output as it depends on the amount of time he has spent holding down the triggers. The longer he presses them down, the more intense and faster the vibrational attacks get. He can even control the spread of the air blast that way. The reason why he created this in the first place is to use the vibrations to crack open safes without touching it and making much of a sound. It's not like he needs to maximize his output for safe cracking. He can create a vibrational shield that helps with defense and escape. However, every good thing has its weakness and for the gauntlets, it's the feedback which can be intense for the physical body. 
But Shocker is a brilliant guy and his suit is more than adept in neutralizing those shocks with its quilt patches. There exists a trip hammer vibration shock which he uses to make his attack way more potent. He later upgraded his equipment to create shockwaves throughout the costume using microcircuitry emitters, a smart choice considering it was easy to take him down by webbing his thumbs. But he still wore the gauntlets to give off the illusion that he was dependent on them. Later, he managed to gain other upgrades such as flight. However, he would often go back to the original suit structure, probably because the upgrades were unstable or way too pricey for someone who cannot commit crimes without getting caught. Fly-eating fool, and my shock therapy's just what the doctor ordered. Insane versions of Shocker in various forms of media. The comics and Spider-Man the Animated Series aren't the only places where this guy has appeared. In fact, he has been featured in other forms of media across animation and even live action. He had appeared in the 1981 show Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends in the episode Along Came Spidey. In 2008, he appeared in The Spectacular Spider-Man. His origin story was notably changed from the comic since his original name was made to be Jackson Bryce instead of Herman Schultz. He used to work as a mercenary for the Enforcers, a group of assassins and extortionists. He then appeared in 2012's Ultimate Spider-Man as a recurring villain. However, he wasn't considered to be a huge threat. Here, he was also a potential candidate for Sinister Six, but he ultimately did not make the cut. In 2017, he appeared in Marvel's Spider-Man in the episode Osborne Academy. Here, he develops his gauntlets as a budding engineer to audition for Osborne Academy. When it comes to live-action movies, Shocker hasn't played a huge antagonistic role like the other Spider-Man villains such as Green Goblin and Mysterio. However, he did have a pretty significant role in the 2017 Marvel movie Spider-Man Homecoming. Bokeem Woodbine, played by the role of Herman Schultz, who is an employee at the salvage company run by Adrian Toomes, aka Vulture. However, Tony Stark's engineering company, Damage Control, has ruined their business so now they commit crimes for their money. Interestingly, the Vibroshock gauntlets appeared in Captain America Civil War, where it was wielded by the Hydra agent Crossbones. What did you think of Shocker? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then don't forget to like and comment on this video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one.